There we go. There we go. Had a little technical issue. Thanks for, I see you guys now. I see that uh, you have some people and I see myself, which is great. All right, now, now that I see myself, I know you guys see me. <laughs> um, I had the screen sharing option kind of showing and not my video cam. Blank shot. It's actually not a screenshot, it's a blank shot. But anyway, I want to say to everyone here, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting on today. I'm really, really excited again to be here. We got Richard in the house, A-Rod, Paul, VIP member from Indiana. Hey, what's up, Crestview, Florida? Eric's in the house again. Uh, super, super excited. Over the last week, I've been getting a ton of questions from newbie auto body people and just people looking to get into auto body. And um, I just wanted to answer and go over a couple of things here. I said my title basically says newbie auto body and paint ideas. Amazing things that you can do with automotive paints. Yo, what's up, people? So I just wanted to talk, you know, maybe five, six, seven minutes about that. And then we will go directly into live Q&A with you guys tonight. Um, because in about one hour, I got to go pick up my eight-year-old Maya from piano school. She's in piano school right now. I'm in Japan. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I know some of you guys are on the East Coast Central time. You're like, what the heck? It's 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, you know? She's at piano school. But yeah, she's at piano school. I got to go pick her up. So we are going to cut this uh, at about 30 minutes from right now. All right, so we're going to get into this 30 minutes, full-on Q&A with you guys, and uh, let's kick some ass. Now, first thing, I just want to get a hand and a count of all the newbie people in here, first-timers watching this live cast here, first-timers, just type in the chat, first time, this is an interactive training, so the more you type in the chat, the more you talk to me, the more I can interact with you, and the more fun this will be. Uh, first-timers, type in first-time watching. Uh, if, if you're on your fifth time, type in fifth time. What's up from Montreal? And also type in the chat where you're calling in from, right? Where you're calling in from in the world. Could be Canada, Australia, US, Florida, New York, wherever you're from. Type in the chat where you're from. Uh, your name, if you want to mention your name, you know, I'll, I'll do some shout outs. Uh, some of your names I can see here. Some of them, you guys got these pen names, so I, I don't know. Uh, so we got Fernando in the house. We got Tom, Tom, second timer. Walter, third timer. Sleep361, first time. John Ryan. Hey, Tony from the Philippines. What's up from the Philippines? Wow. Illinois, Berto, several times. Chris Duke. Phoenix, first timer. Washington. Uh, Richard, sixth time. Wow, this is the first time watching Auto Body Paint. I usually watch your flipping cars to profit videos. Chris says, what's up, Tony? I can't keep up. Eric Gonzalez, Theodore Huggins, Trinidad, Florida, uh, Chris Duke, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Walter, two-timer from VA, uh, Denver Cowboys, awesome, the bodywork guy, first-timer from Boston, awesome, Mexico, Daniel, Canada, Brooklyn, New York, first-timer, Troy from Minnesota, about five times, Kevin, Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for getting on. Anthony Cheney, I recognize your, your name here. Second timer from Southern Illinois, Ryan. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for typing in the chat, getting back to me here. What's up, Hank? How you doing, Hank? Good to see you on tonight. Uh, first time from the Bay Area, California, Dave Hopin Gardner from Virginia. That's a cool-ass long name. Wow, I thought I had a long name. Anyway, thank you everybody for getting on quick. I am still in Japan. I'm going to be here for another 10 days or so. Then we're going to be heading back to Texas in my home garage, my body shop. And we'll be doing some live calls there, uh, the, the live call after the next one. So the second live call from today's date in two weeks, we will be in Texas, Dallas, Texas, in my shop. I'll be finishing up the BMW project. We'll be doing the color sanding and buffing and making that thing look like an amazing project. Uh, and then my truck from Japan is probably going to be there. Uh, they didn't deliver. Anyway, with all of that put aside, let's cut to the business here. We got Carlos from Canada, Paul fifth time. Caden, I would say I'm a newbie at auto body and paint. Awesome. Thank you guys for getting on. Okay, so over the last week, 
I've been getting a ton of you know comments on my YouTube channels, a ton of comments from my emails. People just saying, Tony, you know, could I paint uh, you know, my cabinets with automotive paints? You know, this guy was refinishing some, he's like, I want to do some glass, glossy style cabinets. I'm like, absolutely. I got this other kid, other kid was working on a little uh remote control car. He's like, Tony, I love automotive paints. I want to start using that. I want to paint my my scale. He had a remote control car and an airplane, remote control airplane. He sent me pictures. I think it was like a six foot long remote control airplane. He's like, I want to put some automotive paint on that. Can I do it with automotive paint? I'm like, absolutely. You know, you could paint anything with automotive paints. It's the same stuff. Base coat, clear coat. You can do custom jobs. I have a VIP member who's been successfully buying and selling antique products on eBay, like gas pumps, you know, the old antique style gas pumps, old antique style mini refrigerators. These guys are picking them up locally, refinishing them, making them look brand new again and selling them as antique items with new automotive paints. And they're coming out amazing. So you could, you know, it does this. You, it doesn't have to be just cars. You don't have to just do auto body paint to cars. Like, you know, when I was young, I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was painting my uh, my little mopeds, motorcycles. I was painting my neighbor's Xbox. You know, he had an Xbox or a system. He wanted to put a cool metallic paint job on it. So we goofed around with that. And we painted that. Of course, you want you could use smaller spray guns with that. You know, the 1.0 tips or so, but it's really, I mean, it's the opportunity and it's just limited to your, your thinking and your brain. You could do anything with automotive paints. I painted my daughter's little uh, quad, her little electric quad from, who made that? Razor. Razor makes a little quad. It was like an ugly red, you know, where the plastics were all red. We custom painted that to a nice purple, put some flake in it. You could, you know, it's, it's really limitless on what you could do with automotive paints. You could paint anything and make it look cool. So that's just, I just wanted to get that out there, you know. Hank, look at Hank. Hank just said, I did a laptop case with my daughter with color shift, pearl, and clear. It came out pretty cool. So absolutely, it doesn't have to be just cars. You could do anything with automotive paints. I mean, you know, you got a, a, a microwave. You want to paint your microwave red, right? Take the metal framing off and sand it down and paint it red, all right? Anyway, I just wanted to get that out there because people were kind of like on the fence, like, can I use this stuff on my, my plastic parts on my Xbox or can I do my dirt bike or can I do my model plane? You know, basically, you want to use the same primers if you're, you want to sand. It's the same process. So whatever you're taking and learning with auto body and paint, finishing down with 2K primer, 400 wet sand, you want to take and apply all those same concepts and do it on your your little mini project same exact thing uh here the bodywork guy could you use clear coat on wood absolutely you could use clear coat on wood uh my father used to do when he was around he's dead now but rest in peace dad uh he used to make a lot of wooden clocks hawaiian wooden clocks we lived in hawaii at the time and he would make koa clocks and finish them really nicely and then spray some clear coat on them to make them pop and they used to come out amazing you know just got to remember if you're painting a really grainy wood you're going to get a grainy little finish right so you got to make sure it's nice and sanded down as smooth as possible then you lay your clear coat on it so that's my only uh my only uh tip i agree sleep thanks guys so anyway with that said i hope that kind of sparked your imagination that you could do all kinds of stuff with auto body automotive paints um, can I paint my wife? I'm pretty sure you could paint her toenails. <laughs> Ralph is funny. All right. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's get into some live Q&A quickly for about 20 minutes. Try to get as much as possible with you guys. And then I have to head out and pick my daughter up. I, got, yeah, I think we got about 30 minutes from now. We got about a good 30 minutes. All right. So Andy says, what do you think using a cheap paint gun or a high dollar spray gun? Well, Andy, I talk about this in my other videos. Cheap guns, you get what you pay for, right? You can go to Harbor Freight, get those $20, $25 spray guns, but they are made so cheap. The springs in, in the handle, everything is made so cheap. The cups strip, they, the spray pattern comes out like crap. You know, don't waste your time. Pick up a mid-grade, 
You know, and you can go all out, get an Iwata Sada high-end spray gun, spend eight hundred thousand dollars, or you can check out the Warwicks, what we use at the shop here. We promote their brand. They sell awesome spray guns, designed in California, made in Taiwan. Does that sound familiar? That sounds like the Apple products to me. They're all designed in California, made in China. So you know, just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's a crap product. All Apple computers are made in China. Right, uh, the Taiwan especially, I think they do a lot nicer quality with the spray gun. So check out the Learn Auto Body and Paint site. Uh, we sell all the Warwick line spray guns, and uh, if you buy there, we will hook you up with some amazing VIP stuff as well. So let's see, Learn Auto. I should actually have all these links ready. It's my laziness. <clears throat> okay, so if you go there, that's the shop. Check out the Warwick 904. Okay. And the 980 if you want to get a high, high end. Look at the 980 uh, if you want to get a good DIY spray painter. We spray with all the guns uh, that you see. We spray, I only use Warwick guns right now. So if you guys go to the shop, check out the 904. Great all-around DIY gun for under 200. Uh, what's up, Tom? VIP. And the 980 is more of a Rolls Royce. You get to get the top of the line, and it's a very, very great, great gun. Yours is going to be delivered tomorrow. Awesome, Troy. Give me a review on that. What's up, Sam Smith? Uh, Orlando here, dodging hurricanes. Okay. Now... Let's see. Can I buff out 1,500 grit on clear? Absolutely, Rick. You could buff out 1,500, but I prefer to go to at least 2,000 grit. Some people want to go to 3,000. I honestly think it's overkill. Uh, 1,500 to rub it down. If you want to cut it quick, start with 1,200. Get it flat. Go to 2,000. Get it prepared even smoother. And then you do your two-stage buffing on top of that. All right, and I show you exactly step by step on how to do that in the VIP area. You want to use a two pad system, uh, wool pad in the beginning with your compound to, to get it glossy, and then your scratch remover with the foam pad to take out all the swirl marks and to get it like looking like glass. And then if your paint is about a month old, then you could put some wax on it. Uh, if your paint is newer than a month, a couple of weeks old, I would let it breathe, give it a couple of weeks to breathe. Uh, to cure because you don't want to lock in uh, your your paints from drying by applying wax on your paint, right? If you apply sealer, if you apply a wax on your paint, freshly painted paint, you have the chance of getting a solvent pop, which will have like little reaction, little bubbles in your paint if you wax it too soon. So I would give it at least 30 days to breathe, okay? You could do your color sanding immediately, you know, the next day, the next week, color sanding can be done on fresh paint, but then I wouldn't wax it until you're about 30 days in, okay? Then you could wax it, 30, 45 days in, then you could wax it safely. Color sanding and buffing can also be done one year, two year, three year, five years after your paint job, okay? To even bring back the paint job, all right? Or if you just want, don't have time to do it like me, um, I didn't even buff out the Miata yet. That's my goal when I get back to Texas is to buff out the Miata that I painted about a year ago and buff out the BMW. So that's my projects. Color sanding and buffing, making everything look like glass uh, is the goal when I get back. All right, so who's in here? We got Ali, we got, we got this dude in here, uh, and I am going to basically remove his ass from the chat because he said some foul language that I didn't like. We don't like that in here. Okay, we don't like that. So I just got him out of the chat. All right, so I got, I hope you like that tip here. Do you recommend using tiger hair when repairing dent fiber? Yes, they call it kitty hair, tiger hair. Uh, if you're doing fiberglass work, yes, I, I do recommend using uh, kitty hair. I call it kitty hair, Caden. San Bernardo, VIP, what's up, Richard Santana? Thanks for getting on today. Um, Let's see. 
How much would you charge for a paint job like the RAV4? I would say if you know what you're doing, if you're getting good results with your paint jobs, they're coming out nice, you know, at least 3500 3000 you know, if you're new, you don't have a lot of paint jobs under your belt. Uh, and it all depends. Do you need the money, right? Sometimes you'll do jobs cheaper because you need the money. You need the job. But if you're booked, you have a lot of work, then you could up your prices, right? Because you don't have the time. But if they're willing to pay four grand, then you charge them four grand, five grand for the job. You guys getting this? All right. So you basically, you could also price job space, right? You don't want to just take it in because it's it's you're doing a cheap job. But if you're booked, you're busy, you got a couple of jobs lined up. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to do it for 25, but I'll do it for four grand if you want to do it. And then you bang out a nice job for them. Hopefully that helped. Yeah, I. His ass. What's up from Minnesota, Raul? Raul, Raul. <laughs> uh, is too much. Again. Again. It depends on you, right? How much bad, but when I got it, it was very, very bad. Looks like until Langley, Pedro, Bronx, New York. Richard, what is a good wool pad to use? Um, guys, let me know when I'm back. Hopefully I'm back. I know it kind of paused out for a second. Uh, maybe I should, from now on, I should start streaming at a lower rate. What's up, guys? I'm back. I'm back. Uh, okay, so what's his name just said? What is a good wool pad to use? I like to use, uh, what brand is that? Buff and Shine. I use Buff and Shine products. All the products I use is called Buff and Shine. They have the yellow wool pad. That's the one you want to use. The white one is a little bit more coarse. Uh, which you could use as well. The white one I like to use for single stage enamel buffing. Okay, the wool one I like to use for base coat, clear coat, the yellow wool pad, and I like to use the foam pad for my final glazing. We're we're all back, right guys? I know we got close to 80 people on the call. We had almost 90, but because of the freeze, it just cut out for a second. Um, how many clear coats do you recommend on a motorcycle fuel tank using a SATA mini, mini jet? Well, you could easily put three coats with no problem, right? Two to three heavy coats is more than enough clear coat for your paint jobs. All right. Should I finish the VIP videos before I start your videos from the DVDs? Because I receive them with the books or can I mix them up? Um... You could go through the DVDs as well. There's a lot of tips and tricks in there as well. Uh, the VIP course is cool because we update that every year. The DVDs are more for, you could watch them in your home, sit down on your couch, get some tips and tricks, learn, uh, and go through the step-by-step -step process. The cool thing about the Learn Auto Body and Paint online membership is every year I'm doing new projects and we're documenting everything step by step, and you guys get that in the VIP online as well. So, you know, whatever you want to do, Fernando, you could mix and match. You know, do a little bit online, do a little bit through the DVDs. It's all good. You're gonna get you're gonna get tons of information. So, and the DVDs are all step by step as well. So, if you start from DVD one and work your way through, I think that's the perfect bet for you. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. <clears throat> um, where where do you start painting candy paint? Okay, so Eric is probably saying, where do you start painting candy paint on, you know, when you're painting a car? It's the same thing when you start painting a car. Uh, I like to start with, you could start with the driver's side fender, but the only thing if you're doing candy, right, say, let's just for an example, let's say you're doing red candy over a red base coat, and that's the best way to start painting candy because... If you screw up, it's not going to show as much as painting red candy over silver base. But if you paint red candy over silver base, you're going to get more of a candy, glowy, bright effect, right? And that's how you really want to do it. But you can still get an awesome, deep candy look if you paint over red base. They say when you paint over candy, you want to start from, you want to actually pass one whole side of the car at a time, kind of. You want to stretch it out. It's not like doing a whole panel. You know, you want to kind of lay it out across the whole car at a time. You want to go.
go over it and it's it's more of a 75% overlay versus a 50% overlay. You got to be careful with candy because you can get, you know, you can really cloud things up if you don't know what you're doing. So I really recommend if you're doing a blue candy, green candy, red candy, go over that color base coat. All right, this way you're going to get some practice. The paint job is going to come out amazing and you'll you'll get the flow. All right, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I hope you got that. Danny says, I love the VIP online stuff. Thinking about getting your F1 program. Well, you know what, Danny? Uh, I think you are going to be making a wise decision on all of that because we cover a lot of awesome stuff uh, in F1. You know, showing you exactly how to flip cars for profit. So for all of you new guys on here, if you haven't yet, you could basically... Uh, and Eric... I have a complete series that shows you how to paint candy in VIP. So it's the Miata project, the candy red one that we did. And I show you exactly how I painted them the booth. And we got new candy projects coming soon as well. I'm dying to do more candy. We're going to be doing Plasti Dip projects. Uh, I got some amazing things coming down the pipeline. I'm going to be getting another motorcycle project to do. Uh, maybe this time we'll do like a Harley Sportster gas tank with some crazy flames on it. And just deck out a Harley. How many guys would like to see that? All right. And, and guys, everything is going to be documented step by step. I'm such a perfectionist. Uh, you know, I like to document everything step by step. And the cool thing is, is in VIP, is I show you my mistakes. You know, if I goof up, if I make a mistake, I'll show you how I fixed it, what caused it, what you want to do to avoid it. And if you end up in the same position, how to not freak out and basically, you know, get the job done. Right, because like I say, a professional is not a person who makes mistakes. A pers a professional is a person who knows how to correct and fix the mistakes that he's made without anybody noticing. Right? Awesome. So yeah, we got a lot of lot of cool things coming around. Uh, if you're interested in Learn Auto Body VIP, just check out this URL. Uh, right now, it's just a one-time investment. Uh, F1 is also a one-time investment uh, if you're interested in learning how to flip cars for profit. Um, but we're thinking of changing Learn Auto Body VIP to more of a monthly option. Uh, more stuff like the Godfather Project. It was great. Hey, the, you know, I've gotten so many amazing reviews on the Godfather Project inside of the VIP course. We're doing another one. My Godfather bought a brand new Subaru Outback three months ago. All right. Uh, right before I came back, he dropped me off to the airport. Right before I got back, like literally two weeks ago, he backed up and hit his mailbox with the Subaru. So he scratched his tail light and put a, a good four inch gouge in the top section of his quarter panel by the glass. Yeah. So I told him, we're going to have to do Godfather Project Part 2. He's like all about it. He can't wait. So when we get back, we're going to be knocking out the Godfather. It's basically a one-day job. Small little dent. We're going to pull it out. It scratched the paint, so we got to buy paint. We're going to be blending it in. So it's more of a spot repair blend that we're going to do. It's a dark green. I believe it's a dark green or dark blue. I don't remember. It's a dark color paint. We're going to show you exactly step-by-step step how to repair something like that as well. I think you guys are going to like that. And I'm going to have him do most of the work too. I mean, it's his car, right? Anyway, it's on lease, so he doesn't even own it. So that, this is something we want to fix, you know what I mean, before he takes it into maintenance. All right, Houston, Texas in the house. Do you seal all the bumpers? Well, you can and you don't have to. Eric says, all the VIP videos are great, well worth the money. Thank you, Eric. You're awesome, buddy. You really are. Thank you so much. Uh, no, not really. If you want to seal them, just protection. Yep. You don't have to seal the bumpers. Okay. If you have clear coat on your bumpers, you could just sand it down 400 and put your new base coat and clear coat right on top of that. All right. So here is all for all you new guys. Here is the link to go to the shop to check out the spray guns. Here is the link to go to the basic learn auto body to get a free auto body manual if you want. And here is the link to basically check out VIP offer. Um, so we're going to go ahead, do a little bit more questions and answers here quickly. Another five minutes or so, five, eight minutes, and we will close it off. You guys, 
Give me some feedback here. You guys liking this so far? You guys learning something? You guys kind of give me some feedback. Type in, yeah, Tony, yeah, whatever, you know, give me some feedback. I, I need to know what's going on here. Just kindly leave a little feedback if you guys are, are liking this. And uh, we will answer a couple more questions. Corpus Christi, awesome. Much love. Thank you, guys. Uh, Tony, does that include chrome bumpers? You know, chrome bumpers I've painted. You have to make sure you sand it and scratch the hell out of it with 80 grit. Okay, remember guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, if you're doing chrome bumpers, chrome parts, you want to paint them. If you're doing your classic, right, you're, say you're doing a, a, a sleeper 57 Chevy and you want to get rid of the chrome on the car, you want to make the chrome all black, right? Basically... What you got to do is get 80 grit on a DA and scratch the hell out of your chrome and sand it down. Okay, get your chrome all scuffed up. Then you would put a 2K primer on it. You could use an epoxy. I've done both. You can use an epoxy primer or you could use a basic 2K filler primer. Okay, a polyester primer. And you want to prime the hell out of those parts. Okay, after that... You sand it with 400 grit and you're ready for paint. And that's how you could turn a chrome part, chrome bumpers, heavy duty classic chrome parts into painted pieces. All right, so that's how you do it. Excellent, guys. Thank you. I right, guys, hope you guys got that. 80 grit it, 2K primer it, and then 400 wet sand, and then you're ready for base coat, clear coat. All right, then you could turn your chrome bumpers into whatever color you want. I've done it in the past. I've never had videos on it. When I do come across something like that in the future, I know I will be doing a complete restoration on a hot rod. It's just the timing is not right now. So you VIP guys, I'm going to be around forever. You know, I'm going to be around as long as I can start making videos, keep making videos and keep doing this. I'm going to be doing this until I'm 50, 60, 70 years old. You know, I love this, right? Customizing cars and working on this stuff. And, and this is what I love. So I'm going to continuously document everything that I do and all you VIP guys are going to get all the benefits and you guys are going to grow with me as I learn new stuff, as I discover new strategies because hey, even me, I'm still learning to this day, right? I'm teaching you guys how to get set up and do what I do, but I'm also out there, I'm learning uh, to, to figure out the best, the fastest ways to get things done, the ways to save you money, the ways to get the same exact results by cutting your time in half. It could all be done, all right? And with tools, you could do that as well. What's up, Tom? Tom says, great stuff, Tony. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Thanks, bro. Yeah, so where else can you talk to an auto body and paint professional who's been doing this for 20 years live and get your unique questions answered? And, you know, especially when you're going through the VIP, you're going to be on the same page as me, right? Like, you're going to be going through all the 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 info. You're going to be getting. We're going to be on the same page. You're going to know exactly. So Chris just said he sneezed and he shit his pants. He's going to be right back, dude. Go wipe your ass, man. Use some baby wipes on that sucker. Oh man, spot putty and touch up paint for gas tank, sand and polish. I think. Have you tried painting a car with spray can paint? I have, and it was a Corvette Hot Wheels when I was twelve. I did that. <laughs> Other than that, no, I have not painted uh, a full car with spray paint. No. Uh, what's better clear coat you've ever sprayed? The best clear coat I have sprayed, I like using the House of Color line. I've been using the House of Color a lot from you know my buddy John Kosmoski. He's an awesome guy. I hung out with him uh, I had the pleasure to hang out with him a few times, and uh, I hope to see him again soon. He has awesome paints and clears. Uh, if you have a chrome bumper and it's rusting, can you get the rust off and clear to stop it from rusting or slow it down? Yeah, you can. You can, you can sand it down, like I said, and apply some body filler on it, basic Bondo. Get some good stuff if you want. And do your body work to it and paint it and seal it up. And make sure on the back side of your chrome bumper to use a, uh, a rubberized undercoating. They sell them in the spray cans. Rubberized undercoating to seal the back. 
because rust comes from moisture and if your back is exposed and not sealed it's going to come back right so seal the back of your bumper the back of your rusted body work whatever you're doing you could treat it with vinegar water first 50 50 mixture with water and vinegar any vinegar water treat your rust after you grind it sand it down again blow it off and then do your undercoating on top of it to seal it you guys getting that have you tried the wet clear coat no i like house of color uh, and you are more than welcome to experiment with all kinds of clears and see what you like. Because, you know, I don't use DuPont as much anymore, but you guys may try it and you guys may love it, right? I use a lot of PPG and House of Color right now. Okay. Motorcycle mufflers okay to be painted, powder coated better? You know, I would powder coat them because of the heat. But if you use heat paint, you'll be fine. And I would, I would just get the canned heat paint to sell them at Home Depot. Make sure you sand it down good, blow it off. And the, the muffler area, you could just hit some flat black heat paint on it and they look good. You know, it's not something you want to gloss. That's for sure. Unless you have chrome pipes, right? Uh, Mark, should I, should I split the cost to fix it? He checked out the car. Loved it, I guess. Split it or not. Mega, I don't know what you're talking about. Mega, Tony, okay, here we go. Mega said, Tony, I sold a 2003 Mazda Protégé, Kelly Blue Book at 25 for 18. The car ran perfect, sold it to a guy. Next day, he told me check engine light came on, Kelly, and he wants to split the cost. Hell no. No, I hope when you sold the car, you had a bill of sale saying the car is sold in as-is condition because it's not your problem, man. If you sold the car and it breaks down, who knows what he did to the car overnight. He could have raced it. I don't know. But your responsibility should end when you sell the car. It's his responsibility. It's the buyer's responsibility to have the car checked out either by a professional mechanic if he wants to. You could say, you know, check it out if you want. Or he could do the check himself, right? Hell no. You should not split the cost to fix it. It's done. He bought it. Okay, hell no. Say, you know, it was fine when I had the car. I had no issues. I'm sorry, you know, go get it fixed. It's only like a $200 fix if it's a catalytic converter, but heck no. I think maybe he's just trying to get some more money out of you. That's not fair. That's not fair. Absolutely not fair. All right, that's how I look at it. Always have a bill of sale when you're selling your car. Being sold in as-is condition, you know, you don't want to deal with it. Okay, guys? Uh, how does PP, PCC primer stack up with 2K primer that you use? You know, I don't know what you're talking about, PCC primer. I've never used it. I measured, let's see what we got here. Uh, 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 uh. Man, we got a lot of comments coming in here. Anyone use the turbine paint system by Apollo? Any good? I have not. I know we had VIP guys using them uh, with good results. I went to that dealer's auction. Those 2007 went for $9,200. That is ridiculous. That is stupid. That's why I don't like to go to auctions anymore. They are overpriced. You got too many people coming in who don't know how to flip cars for profit. And they are driving the bid prices up. That's why I say... The best place to go is to cherry pick your local market. Cherry pick your local market. Yes, absolutely. Frame machine in VIP's future. Yes, absolutely. That's actually the next piece of equipment I want to buy uh, for the shop. Uh, a little mini frame rack. Nothing huge. Small frame rack to do little frame repairs. Uh, you know, I'd like to pick up. I'd like to pick up a smashed up Porsche. Or some exotic sports car that we could do some kind of cool work to and get it back on the road in the future. That's in the future. You know, that's maybe a year or two down the line. I just have, you know, we got so many things we're doing right now here. Uh, Danny D made my first flip last week. Made $2,300 as profit. Bought an 86 Camaro for 1000 Put a 500 into it. Sold it for 1500 Oh, my God. You are a freaking badass Danny D. Dude, $2,800 profit, $2,300. Woo! Congratulations. 
Look, situation of money says keep away from public auctions. Huge time waster. Absolutely. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you could pick up a shitload of cars there really, really cheap. But now so many people, you know, they're driving so many people there. It's good for them because they make a lot of money off shit cars. But for you guys, not that great, you know? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I really look forward to you guys coming on next week. I enjoy coming on here, talking to you guys. I want to say thank you again. Um, let's meet up again next week. Here is the shop link. Here is the link to get the free auto body and paint manual for all you newbies. And also check out the VIP course. I think it will give you tremendous value, especially if you're joining us live here. You can use the trainings, learn, get on the same page, Q&A with us here, and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. So again, guys, thank you for getting on tonight. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you next week. I got to go pick up my daughter. Uh, it's about a 10-minute walk. And um, <clears throat> Hank, Scott, I'll see you. Tony, I'll see you. Eric, Andy, all you guys. Jeff, thank you so much for being on tonight. Again, don't forget these links. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, you want to get a free auto body book, uh, we'll be back and I will see you guys on next week as well for how to buy and sell cars for profit. Uh, and uh, we are going to kick ass. All right. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome as hell. I will see you on next week. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Signing off, Tony B from Learn Auto Body and Paint. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night, good night. You rock. All of you guys are rock stars. Have a good night, guys. Cheers.